Yeah, I've told you how I screen record these where it starts some random interval after I hit record. It doesn't actually start recording for a few seconds. So I'll let it run, then I'll back it up, and that'll be the actual start of the episode. Make sure I get the whole thing because we're starting from the beginning. I did notice as I was screen record ahead, in a few episodes, it looks like we're going to start skipping the cold open at least for a few episodes. That's going to make my job a lot easier. Then I don't have to worry about this crap. I can just start recording at the beginning, queued up at the end of the song. I don't have to sit through the song, and we're always queued up, so we don't have to worry about it. But in the meantime, what this will do is it'll present me with a, uh, a still frame from in the episode, a few seconds in the episode. It looks like this time we're about you know, 30 seconds into the episode. And look what we're seeing. Look at this douchebag. Guess he's got one of his playing cards, you know, where he has all the stats for everybody and everything. He's still one of my, one of the reasons I think he's so interesting is I did not clock him as being evil during the exam. And he was interacting with everybody and hanging out and talking to people. He just seemed like a nerd and I kind of liked him. And then they flipped the script and it turns out he's evil. That's one of the things I think why I've been obsessed with him ever since. Plus he's a douchebag. Just look at this very punchable look on his face. Man, I can't wait for him to get his. We've been seeing some characters get theirs on this episode, in this, this series, right? He's going to get his, and I'm going to be here for it. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going on one. Three, two, one. <laughs> At least the animals aren't sentient in this world. You know, I like the animals where they belong, you know, dumb. What the hell? PG-13? Oh, okay, he's just sick. All right, gotcha. I don't know. We can still take it either way. Okay. Douchebag. Yeah, yes, I would. Ew. Disgusting. <laughs> There's something wrong with you people. Great. And you're jealous about that. That is one of his playing cards. Character cards. You're creepy. He knows how to pick talent young, that's for sure. He's like the football scout that sees it in the eighth grade, right? His whole snake neck thing, man. Because he's a moron. What are we, um, rehashing the first series? I, I guess they are. Don't tell me this is going to be a cl cheesy clip show. We just came out of filler, man. Right. Turn to the dark side. <laughs> right in the nuts. That's where it all began. If only you had kept that resolve. <laughs> this author is obsessed with tongues. Hey, half the awesomeness of this character is the voice actor. I mean, it's, he's well-written. 
But the voice actor brings so much to the table. We gonna see any of this training? Is it all gonna be off screen? Yeah, that's right. Kiss it, ass Kabuto. Kiss it. He's just a parasite, man. I thought he was his own person. Let me take your arms. That was one hell of a punishment, man. <laughs> Why wouldn't he dare? How am I going to wipe my ass? I know he can still move his arms. I was kidding. Phrasing. Yeah. So I wonder if what he's saying is that if he finds the right body, he can reject the curse and recover the use of his arms for jitsu, right? It sounds like what he's saying. There could also just be a statute of limitations, right? Because I think he plans on living. He's on some Voldemort shit, right? He plans on living forever. Forever is a long time. And um, at some point, somebody might invent, and maybe even you or maybe one of your talented minions, can invent a jitsu who will, uh, I guess we would say, wash away curses or reverse curses or something. You can even do maybe a time travel jitsu, prevent it from ever happening. I don't know. Like it, There's some different ways you can go with that. If you have forever to do it, you can go down every single avenue. Okay, let's say there's 12 different ways we could possibly remove this curse. Explore them all, one at a time, if you live forever. Even if we're talking a couple hundred years, that's essentially forever. When the normal lifespan of these guys are probably about 50 years, because they'll get murked or something. I probably shouldn't be looking at the imagery. You in the hospital again from the previous filler arc? <laughs> that sounds like filler crap, man. Shouldn't you maintain your composer as the leader? You don't have to bark your orders, ma'am. Hmm, that's where the squirrel went. <laughs> random snake is random. Yeah, turn on him. That's right. Strike him. That's right. You better back up, you little bitch. <laughs> Why were you scared? 
by this place. <laughs> you can keep her on my back. You're a bad minion. <laughs> we know he walks slow, though. Remember that time he went, he forgot something? It took him forever to get back to the room? <laughs> He's quite mad, you know. That's my boy. That's my master. Exactly. Ass kisser. Yeah. It's one big slug. You're just a fanboy. I'm so disappointed. I thought you were your own man. If only I could ride your coattails. There's honor in service. Don't get me wrong. I would love to be a minion to the right person. But, you know, I'm never going to be the slobbering fanboy. That, you know, that's a bit much. I think he's on some mind palace shit. That's impressive, but we rarely see the knives do anything. Almost always, they throw the knives and the knives get blocked and that's it. We've seen it a couple times. The knife was an extension of the chakra where he's able to capture his shadows. I mean, I'm not saying it never works. It's not like bullets in a, in a the MCU, right? Or bullet, you know, guns on Angel or Buffy. Like, that, that literally never work. Yeah. <laughs> Missed it. But not him. I will get that moth. Well, I guess he was done with it. Goodbye, crew world. Hmm. Why do I have to keep holding this pig? Well, that's that's my first, second, and third guess. I'm just saying. This is giving me um, what was it? Uh, the third Harry Potter movie where they just kept doing. <laughs> he grabbed the mouse. I didn't realize you were carnivorous. I guess he's not a snake. He, he's not a. Uh, Squirrel. He's something else. What would that be? I'm starting to think you like the pain. He, he's even got the snake robe. You're leaning into the branding just a bit too much there, buddy. Oh, shit. That's right. Get his ass. Interesting. Yeah. Here's Johnny. Yeah. Is this it? I 
I've been wondering about this. It's time for you to go. This will be the only way I respect him if he does this. <laughs> it you. He'll be properly motivated, I'm sure about that. Off with his head. What if Kabuto is going to step in? We know how long it takes him to walk back to places, though, so probably not. <laughs> Bitch. That's what I've been saying. Oh, shit. Shots fired. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. I'm still pissed. <laughs> Get his ass. That was one of my favorite uh, arcs in the original series. Seem weird, you just go along with this. So, I mean, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, that asshole. She was one of my favorite characters from the first series. So abrasive. <laughs> they all got wrecked. You guys are mean. Yeah. It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all dead as hell. Hey, man, Disney's going to sue. Watch it. Which I thought was a punk move. He couldn't handle Itachi. It wasn't that he thought you had more promise. It said he couldn't handle him. That's just the interpretation there. Yeah. <laughs> punk ass. He's running you up into funny pages before he kills you. Let's face it, you're just a snake tongue. Yeah, weak. It is disgusting. I've been saying this. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you stink. What is his ultimate point? What is he trying to do here? <laughs> Man, this is a diss track. He dropped a diss track right before killing him. TV Tropes calls it the reason you suck speech. <laughs> He's basically a parasite. I called uh, Kabuto a parasite. Rochimaru is the real parasite. <laughs> Man. Well, 
What was uh, the Eminem uh, diss track, Kill Shot? This is on that level. You're an idiot. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm here for the diss track, but I wish he had just killed him immediately. <laughs> you get him? Nice. So he... Right. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> See what that voice actor is so good. The Orochimaru voice actor, he's amazing. He's worth watching the du uh, the dub just for him alone. Everybody else is because I've heard the Japanese in various places, right? Everybody else is comparable. They're not like one of them much better than the others, you know. I find the the Sakura voice actress, the, the English one, to be a little corny. But Orochimaru, my God. Incredible. <laughs> this track. Get these snakes out of my face. You come out with your snakes? Look at me. I'm the mongoose. If you ever seen Ricky Ticky Tabby, you know what happens next. Maybe that's maybe that's a mongoose. Maybe that's what that is. <laughs> or the hawk gets a snake. Hawks like hunting snakes too. Look at the snake, he's pissed. Yeah. Gotta say, man, I didn't know that uh, Sasuke had this inning. Now, you do run into a problem with reaction channels, and nobody's done this here, but I'm talking about it in general. I hate this with, uh, specifically with uh, Better Call Saul, anytime Lalo, whatever his name is, Lala, Lalo, shows up, Everybody's in the comments, oh my God, here's Lalo, here's Lalo. He shows up and he's in like a two minute scene at the end of an episode, near the end of a season. Could be a one and done. Could be somebody they brought in for a couple episodes to end the season and that's all you ever see of them. In which case, the commenters wouldn't be saying, oh my God, there's Lalo, there's Lalo, woo right? They would just, they would just come, oh, that was a pretty cool scene, you know? they play cool. Like if you're an actual commenter who cares about not spoiling the reactors you play it cool you don't you know drop your your, your pants every time you the character shows up right because they don't know yet like this is the first episode they've seen them in so i just think that you give up the game you show your hand as a reactor when you, you react like that i see it on so many channels but there's lalo uh when spike first shows up in season two of buffy you know, it, it, the original plan was he was only going to be in a few episodes and he was going to be killed that same season. The reaction of the commenters would have been very different if that would have been his actual arc. This is what we actually got. And so the, some of these people just, you got to play it cool, man. Just act like you've been there before. Supernatural, Cassiel shows up. You know, the commenters, they can't help themselves. Like, it's so annoying. You know, and you, do, you give up the game. You show your hand, right? Well... Nobody's done that here. But one thing that has happened is people are like, well, you know, Sasuke is not a bitch. Him going to, to Rochimaru isn't, doesn't make him a punk, right? You know, it's not idiotic. Well, the people saying that have seen the entire series. They've seen this moment. They see what happens next. I suspect Sasuke is going to kill him. Maybe not in a couple episodes. Maybe it would be towards the end of the series. But, and I suspect Sasuke is going to kill him. One of the reasons I suspect that is because when I was originally stating that, you know, Sasuke is a punk for, for going to Orochimaru and getting played like that, there was so much pushback. There would only be pushback if it gets the decision gets vindicated later, right? So I've had this in the back of my mind the whole time in that the pushback wouldn't have happened if he got played and he got his body taken over and it was basically a Greek tragedy. Like, you know, he made a bad decision 
and it played out in a way where he I think John Locke and lost. Now I have another I have alternate interpretation of that, but if you look at it on the surface, he got played. He's a punk, pathetic, pretty pathetic life, pretty p- pathetic character arc, right? But that you know, if that was uh, Sasuke's character arc here then people would either be agreeing with me or just be playing it cool or just wouldn't wouldn't have much to say about it, right? Because it's like, yeah, you know what, if you look at the totality of it. So it's hard objectively, and I'm not criticizing anybody in the comments, I'm saying because of what happened, this is kind of the track my mind's been going on. I've been wondering, does Sasuke turn the tables? Then what happened was he eventually stated, uh, not too long ago, I think, that he would be okay with dying if that man Orochimaru would take over his body and kill his brother. He just wants his brother dead. He wants revenge. He don't care how he gets it. And that changed my mind. I was like, okay, well, maybe he does get taken over, but then Orochimaru gets busy, takes out his brother, right? And Sasuke's happy with that. It's, it's a, a devil's bargain, right? It's like, look, I don't care if I die. I already dug my two graves. We're both going in there. I don't care. So that made me change my mind. I was like, okay, well, maybe that's where people are coming from. Because to me, that's pretty badass. It's like, look, I want revenge so badly, I don't even care if I live to see it happen as long as it happens, right? So that changed my mind. That's kind of where I've been, my mind's been. And then here in this episode, now we see him, he's coming for that ass. So whatever happened, whatever the end result here is, what I think is going to happen is uh, Rich Mars going to get away because it's too early in the series for him to be killed. It'd be bad. It'd be awesome. Incredible. It'd be one of the best things I've ever seen if that it does happen here because he's built up. You talk about subverting expectations. That turns Sasuke into the big bad. And, you know, it, it changes the course of the entire series. That would be absolutely incredible. I don't think it's going to happen. So he's going to get away. But the fact that Sasuke made this choice and made this move, a move I've been wanting Kabuto to make for, you know, 150 episodes, and he never will because he's an ass kisser, that elevates Sasuke in my eyes. It's like, okay, you're not a punk. You know, now I see where people are coming from. Now I understand. You know, you had a plan. I'm going to use him. I'm going to suck all the knowledge out of him. I'm going to drain him for anything he's useful for. And the second he's not useful anymore, anymore the knife's going in the back. Pure Sith. You know, we go back to the... There's a lot of Star Wars comparisons here. <laughs> the rule of two exists for a reason. Because once you learn everything you can from your master, you kill him and you become the master. And then you take your own apprentice that you better watch your back on and sleep with one eye open on, right? So, it is interesting and I've definitely elevated my respect for Sasuke. I've had a really, you know, I've had a really low opinion of him because I think it was just such a stupid choice. This makes it less stupid. This makes it a calculated decision. It's a gamble. You could have, you know, you could have been played. He could have got you first. It's whoever stabs first, right? Who goes who goes for the back first? And unfortunately for Orochimaru, there's a specific timeline for when you can take over the body. Where what what if there wasn't? What if it was like okay, you can do it at any point here. Once he gets this level of strength, say that you can measure strength in a ninja from zero to hundred. Anytime he gets above eighty, you can do that. You can take him over. But the stronger he is, the better the procedure is, and the more you can do with it. Like say maybe the body gets capped at whatever. Like say he he has potential as ninety nine, you can take him over anytime after eighty. Well, if he's at 85, he never goes above that once you take over his body. So what you want to do is you want to get him as close to 99 as possible, but before he's expecting you to take him. So then it'd be a calculated risk. It'd be like, okay, he's above 80. I can take him at any time, but I should wait because I want him to get stronger. You see what I'm saying? It's a hypothetical. I'm not saying this is the way the show actually is. I'm saying hypothetically speaking, you can take him at any time, but you want him to be stronger. Meanwhile, he's like, I want to learn as much as I can, but I don't want to take too long before he jumps me. So then you've got a cat and mouse. You got two people, both of them have the opportunity to betray the other and shouldn't betray the other. They're just waiting for the right moment. Then it's just a matter who strikes first. So it's a calculated risk. And if that was the scenario, it's calculated risk. Sasuke doesn't want to wait too long or he's going to get jumped when he's not expecting it. Orochimaru doesn't want to wait too long or he's going to get jumped when he's not expecting it, right? See, that kind of calculated risk, I respect a lot. That's... Less that, though, because it seems like there's a specific point. Okay, at this point, the body runs out, the time period is over, and now I can switch bodies again. It seems to be a specific moment, and it seems like it's in a few days, it sounds like, maybe even a, a hours. That's why Sasuke is making this move now. So, I have a lot more respect for him now. Like, it makes a lot more sense than just being a sacrificial lamb, you know? 